Advent is here. Can you believe it? Advent is here. And if Advent is here, that means that Christmas is almost here. Can you believe that? And if Christmas is almost here, that means that 2020 is nearly over. Yay! Anyone else feel like that? (laughs) That we're just sort of like hanging out for 2021? Bring it on. (laughs) After the year that it's been... um, I, I was reflecting back on a sermon that I did a couple of years ago that I used the story of the Grinch. Do you remember that? Um, I think it was when the time we were using kids' books. And I I used the story of the Grinch. And if if you don't remember that, in a nutshell, the Grinch doesn't like Christmas because of some sort of family issue a long time earlier. And he's looking down on Whoville and everybody's down there getting ready for Christmas and there's decorations and everything. And so he gets so annoyed that the night before Christmas he goes down and steals everything. He, he tries to steal Christmas. So he nicks the, the presents, the decoration, the food, everything that looks like Christmas. He steals it, wraps it up in a big bundle, goes up to the highest cliff and is ready to throw Christmas away. I don't know if the Grinch has stolen Christmas after the year that we've had, it feels like the Grinch might have stolen 2020 from us a little bit. I don't know, I had high hopes for 2020. Not only for my own life, but for this church. We had just finished, this time last year, we had just finished the very successful Imagining Hope program. We were getting ready to employ extra staff here. Things were moving ahead. There was good momentum. We had some really good ideas expressed in Vision Sunday um, that, that as a church we were moving forward with. And then COVID came along and suddenly... Most of those opportunities were either very hard to achieve or the door was closed completely on them. That doesn't mean we haven't had other opportunities that come, has come up to us because of COVID, but certainly most of the stuff that we had planned, we couldn't do. And, and I, don't, I don't know, it's probably the same in our own personal lives. We had hopes and plans for 2020 and then suddenly they're not the same again. <laughs> Things have... It's almost like the Grinch has come along and stolen all those, you know, dreams and hopes and opportunities and plans and wrapped them up into a big ball and is just about to throw them off the cliff. It's not been an easy year. And one of the journalists that I was reading in prep for this um, had this quote. He said, the 2020 has been a year of disruption, disruption of the way of living that we had gotten used to. But they went on and said... um, Dealing and adapting with that disruption has been exhausting. <laughs> when I read it, I went, yes, <laughs> yes, that, that to me sums up this year. Not that it's been bad adapting and, and being creative and working out how do we do things now, but all this adapting, all this, you know, dealing with the changes has been exhausting, has been exhausting. A couple of months ago, I was meeting with some of the young adults and we were talking about what Christmas Eve workshop was going to look like this year. And it became very obvious very quickly that the normal way that we run Christmas Eve workshop leading into the Christmas Eve musical could not happen the same. How can you do a musical when you're not allowed to sing in church? You know, it was obvious that it was not going to be the same. And as part of that discussion, uh, one of the young people, young adults said, I think after the year that we've had, what we need most at the moment is a focus on joy. We just need to feel joy at the moment. And actually, as the discussion rolled on, one of the other young adults said, instead of the candles being, you know, hope, peace, joy and love, it should be joy, joy, joy and joy this year. I couldn't quite pull that one off. But I did take up that challenge to sort of say, maybe this Christmas, this Advent in the preparation for Christmas, our focus can be on this idea of joy. What does it mean to be experiencing joy in the situation that we find ourselves in? What does it mean as a church to have joy 
after the year that we've experienced. It sounds great, doesn't it? Except if we talk about the elephant in the stable. There, there is one big problem with this, and it's tied in with what I said before, the pure fact that we are all exhausted. <laughs> and if we're all exhausted and we finally get to Advent and now Christmas and Advent are demanding our time and our energy and we still got to set up the tree and we still got to get Christmas ready after the year that we've had, we're exhausted and we're sort of going, and now you want us to try and find joy this Christmas as well? That's just too much. And I've actually... I've heard some people, and there's a small part of me that feels it myself, it would be much easier to opt out of Christmas this year. I I can still go through the motions, but as myself, just to opt out and go, you know what, next year, I'll do it next year. (laughs) It'd be much easier for me not to walk the Advent journey as a person in my faith, but just say, I'm just looking forward to Boxing Day when I can sleep in and watch the cricket. But I don't think that we should. There's a part of me that wants to argue, I think that we, we, we shouldn't opt out this year. And to try and explain why, let's have a look at our Bible reading for today, which, yes, is out of order in the chronological sense of it. But even if you look at the whole of the Christmas story, the whole of the Christmas story is not one where everything went according to plan, is it? <laughs> It is actually a story of a lot of people dealing with disruptions, of things changing upon them. We just have to start at the beginning of it. Zachariah's in the temple doing his priestly duty. Then what happens? He gets disrupted by an angel and everything gets changed upon him. Mary was planning to have a fairly normal engagement leading up to marriage to a fairly normal life. And that was disrupted by another angel who came and brought her divine news. And then we get to the story of today at the beginning part of Luke chapter 2 where everybody's life was disrupted. How? Because Julius uh, Caesar Augustus called a census and basically said, I don't care what your normal life is like. Everybody has to go back to their ancestral town to be counted. And so the whole place was just thrown into chaos as people suddenly went, well, we weren't expecting this, but now we have to deal with this. We have to somehow work through the issue of going back and finding places to stay in our ancestral place so that we can be counted just because one person decided so. Maybe 0 AD is not that different to 2020. Sure, there was no mention of social distancing back then, but certainly people's jobs, their education, their other plans would have all had to change because of this decision by Caesar Augustus. And it's in the middle of this total chaos that people were living that Jesus was born. That is the context of Jesus' birth. Isaiah, 600 years earlier, actually used this line. He said, the, the people were walking in darkness. You know, it was sort of like you, he had a small glimpse of the chaos and the, and the, yeah, the difficulties that people were, were feeling, not just in AD zero, but in general, and saying it was into that that they saw a great light. Actually goes on to say a new light was dawning in this place. It's good to see that even in difficult times, God is at work. God is moving. A new light is dawning. But where does joy come in? We're supposed to be focusing on joy. Like, like a verse like that gives me hope. I'm not sure if it gives me joy. Then we get to the story of the shepherds. A shepherd's life is not that exciting. A shepherd's life doesn't change that much. They basically work 24-7, although sometimes it was 24-6 if you had a nice boss. Um, But they basically worked all the time, and all they did is that they found, you know, green pastures and fresh water for their sheep. 
at, during the day and at night time they kept watch over their flock by night. That, that's what their day was. It was not that different, not that exciting, very monotonous, day after day, night after night, except for these particular shepherds who were on a hillside in Bethlehem at that moment because they were in for one massive disruption. Because the angels appeared and the glory of the Lord shone around and they were terrified, mainly because an angel appeared and the glory of the Lord shone around. But I wonder whether the fact was that they might have gone, oh no, life is not going to be the same again because an angel's just turned up. This is going to disrupt my understanding of the normal ways of living. Life cannot be the same if an angel turns up. And maybe that was another reason they were terrified the implications of an angelic visit. And then we get to the key verse of today. If you're only going to listen to one verse, this is the verse. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, because I bring you good news that will cause great... There it is. Joy for all the people. So the angels are turning up in the middle of this chaos of, you know, glory of the Lord shining around and all that sort of stuff. And they said... The news that we're going to bring is going to bring you joy. Not just hope, but joy. So there it is. How does this good news bring great joy? Not only for the shepherds, but the angel said for all the people, and that includes us. Even in the, after the year that we've had, this news is supposed to bring us joy. So, what is it? I'm going to use the three things that the angel said to just highlight three short gems of joy that we can find. Maybe one of these, God might speak to you through. So the first one, do not be afraid. Just simply by that message, God is saying, you can dispel, your fears can be dispelled because Jesus is coming to you. We don't have to be afraid anymore. One of the theological concepts of Christmas that I love is the concept of incarnation. This idea that God is not distant, not watching us from a distance as Bette Miller sings, but rather God has come to us. That's the whole idea of the incarnation. God has drawn close. Goes on to my other favourite word from Christmas, Emmanuel, which literally means God is with you. God is with us news of this whole story that the one who is coming to save us to help us the one who is the messiah has been born they had been waiting for this for a long time the birth of jesus is a critical step in god's unrelentless plan to bring us back into a loving relationship with god the birth of jesus was a critical step in that and the angels were declaring the good news The Saviour has been born to you. And that definitely should bring us joy. But then the angels also went on and to give some instructions. Um, This will be a sign to you. You will find, and then they rattle off a whole series of instructions. The angels just didn't tell them the good news. They actually gave a little bit of guidance of what to do with that. Go and find this child. Go and see this thing. This is how you'll find it. Here are the instructions to follow. And in the same way, God offers to do that to us. That in Jesus, we do not just find a saviour, but we find a friend, a mentor, somebody who is going to be there with us to help and to guide us. And that should bring us joy. That can bring us joy. But as the shepherds went on to show... Hearing the good news was not quite enough. (laughs) They heard this news, but as the angel said, this good news will cause great joy, not just by hearing it, just by, uh, but also by responding. So the key part of that is when the angels are left, what did the shepherds say? Let us go and see this child, because it was the actual responding to the good news that brought the joy when they actually went off and saw the Christ child and experienced drawing close to Jesus, that brought them joy. So it wasn't just hearing the good news, it was also responding to the good news as well. Although if I just want to go off on a tangent just for two seconds, I would not have blamed the shepherds maybe from opting out not going. Because they did know about this, didn't they? They'd heard the good news, the Saviour had been born, they'd been waiting 
So they, they now know the Saviour had been born. And it was terribly inconvenient to go into Bethlehem at that point. They had sheep they were looking after. <laughs> they were not the sort of people that would have been welcomed to leave the sheep and to go off into town. So it was inconvenient for them. It would have been much easier for them to opt out and go, well, we've heard the good news. That's good enough. But it wasn't for them. They had said, no, we don't want to just hear. We want to have that experience. And maybe we might feel the same way about Christmas this year, going back to my confession earlier. We already know the good news of Christmas. Jesus is born. We already know the stuff that I've said. And it could be very easy as to say, it's just inconvenience for us to enter too much into this Advent spirit this year. <laughs> it's just, it would be easier if we just opt out. Go through the motions, get to Christmas, relax. That would be easier. But in the same way, I think we need to learn the lesson, not only of the shepherds, but maybe of the Grinch, if I go back to the Grinch. You see, if you remember, the Grinch is up there with all the, um, the trimmings of Christmas, the presents, the decorations, the food, everything, ready to throw it away. And he looks down back to Whoville and what's happening? The people are waking up and walking outside and singing. Okay, we can't sing, but I know they're outside. If they're wearing masks, they probably can sing. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, put that aside. <laughs> um, they're singing down there. And the, and, and the Grinch can't work it out. He's going, I've just stolen Christmas from you. You don't have any presents, decorations, food, anything. Why are you singing? And then there's that beautiful line in the Grinch where it says, the Grinch goes, maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store, maybe Christmas is a little bit more. You know, the Grinch has that epiphany where he goes, no, there's more than Christmas than just all this other stuff that we do. Not that the other stuff is bad at all. But if you take all that other stuff away, Christmas doesn't go. 2020 might want to steal all the everything from us this year but Christmas is still coming because Christmas is more than that and maybe we need to have an epiphany like the the Grinch and go well what is it about Christmas that we can't opt out of that we have to make sure that we grab hold of so that if we go back to the shepherds again maybe they can answer that question for us because in verse 20, oh sorry, I should have done my great line here that I made a slide for. Maybe the joy of Christmas is less found in the trimmings like the Grinch found and more in drawing closer to Jesus. Maybe that's what our goal should be this Christmas. How do we draw close to Jesus? How do we step a bit closer to the manger? Because if you go back to the shepherds, they had this experience in verse 20. It says, and the shepherds returned. The shepherds returned. What did they return to? They actually returned to their normal life again. They went back to the fields and they went back to the monotony of day in, day out, looking after their sheep. They went back to what was normal. But was it normal? No, it's not normal anymore for them. Why? Because of the experience that they had had. They said that they went back glorifying God for all they've seen and heard. They were changed by the experience and the normal was not normal anymore. They couldn't they did go back, but it wasn't the same. And I've heard people say that about 2020. That 2020 has changed that perspective of what is normal. The people aren't just going to go back to you know, their daily grind of commuting in for work all the time. What 20 has 20 showed is maybe there's some other ways of doing this that is better for us. And maybe we need to find a different way of balancing work and life. <laughs> I've seen other people sort of go, you know, our understanding of church has changed. Yes, we still love community, but can we do it in a way that has community people here and online at the same time? The answer is yes. So our, our normal has changed. Our perspective has changed. And maybe this Christmas we need to be open for our perspective on Christmas to be challenged. What do we just expect normal Christmas to be like and maybe what's that new perspective that we can get because of the environment we now find ourselves in maybe we can be like the shepherds who had that glimpse of Emmanuel 
and even in returning back to normal, they experienced joy. So this Advent, as we stumble exhausted towards Christmas and long for that new year, maybe we can have our perspectives challenged. I'll actually say, may we have our perspectives challenged. May we see that even in the difficulties, there is good news to be heard and there's good news to be experienced. So let us not opt out of this Christmas season, this Advent season, but rather like the shepherds, let us draw near to Jesus and discover anew the good news that Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. And may as we do that, may these things bring us, and I hope bring the whole world, joy. Joy.